Yo, yo, guys, welcome back again today. And today we're going to be talking about Matthew Henson. Matthew Henson was an African-American explorer born on 1866 in Charles County, Maryland. He was the son of two freeborn black sharecroppers and soon after lost his mother. At the age of four, Henson's father would move the family to Washington, D.C. in search of work. His father would die a few years later, leaving his siblings in the care of Henson's uncle and family members. At the age of 11, Henson would leave home to find his own way and worked in a restaurant. After this brief job, Henson would walk all the way to Baltimore, Maryland to find work as a cabin boy. The ship he worked on was the Katie Hines. Captain Childs would take Henson under his wing and educate him on what it took to be a seaman. Henson's time on the ship would take him around the world to many continents like Africa, Asia, and Europe. In 1884, Captain Childs would pass away and Henson would make his way back to Washington, D.C. He would find work in a hat shop as a clerk and in the shop in 1887, he would meet Robert Edwin Perry. Edwin Perry was an explorer and officer in the U.S. Navy Corps of Civil Engineers. Perry was so impressed with Henson's seafaring credentials, he would hire Henson as a valet for a future expedition to Nicaragua. After a successful voyage, Perry would find Henson work in Philadelphia. Soon after, in 1891, Henson would marry Eva Flint. Though Henson could not stay away from exploring for long and join Perry once again in Greenland. Henson would soon embrace local Eskimo culture, learn the language, and survival skills over the next year. Returning home once more, he would leave yet again in 1893 for Greenland. Henson's goal this time was to chart the entire ice cap. This journey would almost end in tragedy with Perry's team on the road to starvation. This two-year journey was very dangerous, but the team survived by eating all their sled dogs, excluding one dog. The team would return home and return back to Greenland in 1896 and 1897 to collect three large meteorites they found during their earlier quests. These meteorites would be sold to the American Museum of Natural History to help fund future expeditions. Henson's life was spent more exploring than at home, and this would take a toll on his marriage. In 1897, Eva and Henson would divorce. For the next couple of years after the divorce, Henson and Perry would make multiple attempts to reach the North Pole. In 1902, the team lost six Eskimos due to lack of supplies. In 1905, another attempt backed by President Theodore Roosevelt and armed with a state-of-the-art vessel that cut through ice, the team sailed within 175 miles of the North Pole. Henson would write a letter of his frustrations while on the 1905 to 1906 voyage. He states that the members of his crew were spreading false rumors, mistreating him, talking behind his back, and jealous of his abilities. This did not hurt the friendship of Henson and Perry though. Henson and the team would soon have to turn back due to melting ice blocking the path of the sea. While on the expedition, Henson would have relations with the Inuit woman and have a son, though when he returned home in 1906, he married Lucy Ross. The final mission would happen in 1908, and Henson proved invaluable as a team member. He would train others in the art of building sleds and how to handle them. Donald McMillan, a member of the team, stated, with years of experience equal to that of Perry himself, he was indispensable. Many team members would turn back in the following year, but Henson and Perry struggled on. Perry knew he needed Henson and even stated, Henson must go all the way. I can't make it there without him. In 1909, April 6th, Henson, Perry, 40 dogs, and four Eskimos stated they reached the North Pole. This trip would prove difficult seeing that the trip begun with 133 dogs, 24 men, and 19 sleds. Now, as happened often in those days, Henson was overlooked for his accomplishments and Perry received accolades. Henson would make the claim that he was the first even of the team to step foot on the North Pole. He would only receive accolades from the colored citizens of New York in 1909 and fellow African-American communities. The team would face widespread skepticism and Perry would have to testify before Congress about the claims of reaching the North Pole. Lack of verifiable proof is what led people to disbelieve the team and a African-American finding the North Pole. 
Henson would work as a clerk in New York Federal Customs House for the next three decades. He would record his Arctic memories in 1912 in the book A Negro Explorer at the North Pole. 30 years later, Henson would finally receive an invitation to join the prestigious Explorers Club at 70 years old. In 1945, he was also awarded a U.S. Navy Congressional Medal for his Arctic explorations. Henson would die in 1955 on March 9th in New York City and was buried initially in Woodland Cemetery. At the request of Dr. S. Allen Counter of Harvard University, Henson and his second wife Lucy were moved to Arlington National Cemetery. Perry and his wife would soon be moved there as well. So yo guys, today we learned about another African American man and a man of African descent that was an explorer. Please like and subscribe and turn on the bell notification and also follow me on all social medias, which is Afric Network, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and SoundCloud. Each one teach one. And yo guys, till next time, peace, one love.